The next housing market crash will be worse than 2008. And today we're going to do a deep dive into the Naples Amakali Marco Island Metro. We're talking about Southwest Florida. We're talking about Collier County. And this market has been on fire for a very long time. Prices have increased astronomically. Homeowners are sitting on a metric shit ton of equity. They feel wealthy and supply has been constrained and supply and demand will always dictate price. And while we've started to experience some volatility in some markets as it relates to price, we are nowhere near a housing market crash yet. And I've got great news for you because you've got time, especially in most Florida markets, to prepare if you're thinking about buying or selling. Because the next housing market crash is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take time, but the setup is in. And if you're paying attention to the most actionable information that exists, you can prepare accordingly. And having been a stockbroker for 20 years and having experienced the great financial crisis and having experienced plenty of bear markets and plenty of crises, I can tell you that the next housing market crash is predictable. It's obvious, especially in other markets. And while I can make the argument that certain markets are more insulated than others, make no mistake, when the everything bubble bursts, which it hasn't yet, when the economic tide goes out and the financial tide turns, I can assure you folks that haven't been paying attention are going to be shocked because the equity that they banked on no longer exists. And breaking news updated two hours ago, Charlie Munger on the record is saying that commercial property market is in trouble. And if you've been watching for a while, you know that I'm talking about this regularly. There is a massive risk to the system based on commercial real estate failing. And make no mistake, it is going to fail. And make no mistake, there are going to be a lot of pension holders, a lot of investment owners that get decimated. And unfortunately, it will be too big to fail. The government will step in and they will print money. And that will be solved through new taxes, which nobody's going to talk about because no politician can ever talk about that and ever hope to be re-elected or elected. But it's going to happen. But what I don't know is when it will happen and how severe it will be. But I do know, and to be clear, I'm not an analyst, I'm not an economist, I'm not a financial advisor, although I was a stockbroker for 20 years, I feel a fiduciary responsibility to share what's happening right now so that you can make the best decisions for yourself, for your family, and for your financial bottom line. Because many of these leading indicators absolutely impact the lagging indicators, specifically your home value, specifically the housing market. It takes time for those prices to reset and adjust. But make no mistake, as the pain of recession worsens and the predictable economic changes happen, we are going to experience a meltdown similar to 2008, and I suspect it will probably be worse. And I suspect that there's a black swan event looming that no one can predict. But make no mistake, the trend is not your friend in terms of equity appreciation, at least in the near term. And good, bad, right or wrong, up or down, real estate will always trade. It will always be a good market for someone. So long term, I suspect the future looks bright. But near term, the next few years are going to be marked by extreme volatility. And you must know what that is in order to make the best decisions. Nonetheless, Charlie Munger of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's right-hand man, one of the smartest people on the planet as it relates to anything financial, is on the record as saying there's trouble ahead for the U.S. commercial property market. The 99-year-old investor told the Financial Times that U.S. banks are packed with bad loans. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like something that happened in 2008? Because it sounds very familiar to me. And one of the benefits of hearing from a 99-year-old investor who's sharp as a tack is that he has experienced almost every single market that has ever existed within the last 99 years. 
And if you go back further in history and you get acquainted with what has happened with other nations that have failed in the past, you'll notice that the writing is on the wall. Because these banks are vulnerable with bad times to come as property prices fall. And he goes on to say it's not nearly as bad as it was in 2008. And I'll add a word here. Yet. Yet. It's not as bad as 2008. Yet. But trouble happens to banking just like trouble happens everywhere else. And he goes on to say a lot of real estate isn't so good anymore. We have lots of troubled office buildings, a lot of troubled shopping centers, a lot of troubled other properties. There's a lot of agony out there. And I would argue the agony hasn't hit the consumer yet. We haven't begun to feel the agony of what we're going to experience because as layoffs happen, and as the recession worsens, agony, panic, and uncertainty uptick exponentially. Which takes us to the most current data that exists within Naples, Immokalee, and Marco Island Metro. We're talking about Collier County. Now, what I'm going to do differently this time than what I've done in the past is I'm going to tell you what I would be doing if I was thinking about buying or selling in any market. We're going to cover this metro and I'm going to go deep into what the dynamics are, but I'm also going to share the tips that I would employ if you're thinking about buying or selling anywhere, but specifically in the state of Florida. And if you want more hyper-local data or more actionable information in a market that I do not service, then please reach out because we will connect you with someone that we know, like, and trust, a top professional that can advocate and negotiate for you the right way. Because there are two things I guarantee. One, we will find your dream home and lifestyle. Two, we will negotiate the best deal humanly possible. Ain't nobody overpaying for a home on my watch. Nonetheless, as of March 2023, and today, as of this filming, it's May 1st. So this is old information but it's the most recent data that's been published by the Florida Realtor Association. So we must know what it is, but be aware it's a month old. It is lagging. Closed sales down 20%. Cash sales down 24.7%. Median sales price on the uptick 4% from 789.5 to 821. Great news, right? No, because median sales price doesn't include all values. Average sales price does. And average sales price is down almost 8% in March. What does April look like? Yet to be determined, but I suspect I already know what it is, and I'll tell you as soon as I do. But average sales price dropped from 1.449 and change to 1.335 and change. Not great news if you're thinking about selling in the Naples Immokalee Marco Island Metro. Much better news if you're thinking about buying in this market because we've had an 8% average sales price reduction. And we're going to go into historical context so you know where we're trading as of March relative to what the recent past looked like, especially pre-pandemic. But you must know what's happening now. So if you need more information, please reach out. Dollar volume is down 26.3%. Median percent of original list price received is down 5.6% from 100 to 94.4. Median time to contract on the uptick up 168%, which is a return to normal. 16 days, March of 2022, extreme seller's market, completely abnormal. 43 days, a return to normal. Median time to sale uptick 49%, 85 days versus 57 New pending sales down 17.7%. New listings down 23.2%. Much less new listings. Short supply. And we'll get historical context so that you understand what the supply side looks like. Because supply and demand will always dictate price. Pending inventory down 24%. Pending inventory are the homes that are on the market currently under contract. Inventory of active listings, meaning the homes sitting on the market unsold in this market, up 110%. There were 949 homes sitting on the market unsold a year ago. That number is almost 2,000. 
1992 to be exact. And the month's supply of inventory upticked massively from 1.6 months to damn near five. That is a buyer's market. And I don't care what the stats say that that's not a buyer's market. Bullshit. It's a buyer's market. 4.9 months relative to 1.6 is a buyer's market. And it will be an extreme buyer's market in the future, up 206%. Now, I don't share this to scare you. I share it to prepare you. And if I'm a buyer thinking about buying a home in this market, first thing I'm going to do is speak to a lender if i'm not a cash buyer if i'm a cash buyer well then skip this step but i'm going to talk to a lender and i'm going to understand what my mortgage options are i'm going to understand what my debt to income ratio is i'm going to understand what different interest rates mean to me and although i do expect that in the near term in May, I suspect that housing will catch up with inflation and I think the Fed will pivot and they will start to reduce Fed funds rates. And I suspect the likelihood of mortgage interest rates becoming more tenable. I think we're going to see a downtick in mortgage interest rates in the near term. But I don't think that window is going to last very long. So if you do experience a downtick in mortgage interest rates, then you have the opportunity to either refinance or potentially trade up into a bigger home if that's what you need. And if mortgage interest rates do come down, I do suspect that you're going to see an uptick in demand. I also think you're going to see an uptick in people willing to sell and trade up into a bigger home. It is critical you talk to a mortgage professional because you want to know what the maximum seller credit is depending on the loan that you are looking to get. Because depending on what the variables are, you may be able to negotiate a massive whopper of a seller credit in order to buy down your interest rates. So it is totally possible. And I know the number that the market is looking for in terms of really activating demand is five and a half percent. I have no idea if we're going back to five and a half percent. But for argument, if interest rates are at 7% now and they drop to 6% based on the inflation numbers, well, it is very likely that we are able to negotiate a seller credit big enough to bring your monthly mortgage interest rate for the term of the loan into the fives or potentially lower, depending on the circumstance, so that your 30-year fixed loan is significantly less than whatever the current market conditions are. And to be clear, I believe long-term they are going significantly higher. But if you're able to take advantage of a decline in mortgage interest rates and you're able to negotiate a seller credit to bring down your mortgage interest rate to something in the fives, well, if that's right for you, I would encourage you to consider taking advantage of the opportunity. But Chris, what if the market's going to be cut in half? And what if homes are going to be trading at half price? Wouldn't it be stupid of me to buy a home now? I don't know. It might be right for you to wait. And each market is going to trade very differently. So what's happening in my hyperlocal market is going to be very different than what's happening in Naples, Immokalee, and Marco Island, which is going to be very different than every metro that exists within the state of Florida, which is going to be totally different than any other market in the country. So it's critical that you understand what the hyperlocal market is that you're thinking about buying or selling in. And I'm going to go deeper into this because I want you to understand the dynamics of what's happening happening right now. Because if half price homes are on the table, then you probably should wait, which takes us to the story of median sales price. And median sales price is important to understand. But unfortunately, it distorts the picture of the market because it does not encompass the higher price points or the lower price points. It gives you the middle term. Nonetheless, March up 4% to 821. Year to date in the Marco Island, Immokalee, Naples metro, up 4.3%. You can see that with the exception of January and March, it's been double digit appreciation in terms of median sales price 
for the last 12 months. But gone are the days of 21.8%, 13%, 19%, 31%, 29%, and 25.5%. Those days are most likely over in the near term. But again, supply and demand will always dictate price. And if interest rates come down, I can tell you it's off to the races in terms of sale prices because supply is constrained. And I'll show you what that looks like from a historical perspective soon. Nonetheless, if we look at where we're at today or as of March of 2023, you can't help but notice we're not too far off the all-time highs. But we're a far cry from where we were pre-pandemic, where you could buy a single family home with a median sales price of $400,000. we are up over 100% in terms of median sales price in the Naples, Immokalee, Marco Island metro. There are homeowners sitting on a metric shit ton of equity, and they feel wealthy up until they don't. But the story that we find in average sales price is a totally different story than what we just saw in terms of median sales price. And that's because it captures all of the values. So the high prices are not thrown out. And many of the markets that exist within these metros are high priced homes. Nonetheless, average sales price, first time in 12 months, we see a downtick almost double digit decline, down 8%. Gone are the days of 39.3%, 36.2%, 33.8%, 27.5%, 26.9%, 34.2%, and 13.5% average sales price appreciation. Bye-bye, not going to likely happen in the near future. But if we go back and look at history, what you'll notice is that we're not at the all-time highs. In fact, we're getting closer to what the average sales price was pre-pandemic. And I know we're not there yet, but we're not too far off. And while January of 2023 at 1.7 and change was the all-time high, 2019, you could buy a home for under a million dollars in this metro in terms of average sales price. Homeowners are still sitting on a metric shit ton of equity, but they're losing it fast. Because if you were banking on 1.7 and you got 1.3, that hurts. You might experience the agony that Charlie Munger just described. But if you're expecting something more than that, you're really in for a world of hurt. Because the truth is, Prices are coming down up until they're not. But as I've said before, supply and demand always dictate price. And while interest rates have not started to downtick yet, and it's yet to be determined if they will, the supply side, as far as new listings are concerned, are in short supply. And what you'll see is volatility over the last 12 months. But in March of 2023, you have the second biggest short supply in terms of new listings, down 23.2%. But September, there was a shortage of 29%. Year to date, there's a shortage of 10%. And if there's a shortage of inventory and there's an uptick in demand, well, then home prices are going to skyrocket. And we're going to be right back into the same cycle that we were in two years ago. And if you look at the bar graph on the bottom, you can't help but notice we have returned to normal in terms of new listings as compared to most of 2019. And although we are not at the extreme high of where new listings were in January of 2019, when we were pushing a thousand new listings, we're not too far off. And we're certainly a far cry from where we were when the market was at its most extreme in terms of being a seller's market. But I can't tell half the story and new listings are only half the story. We have to understand what the inventory is in terms of active listings, meaning homes sitting on the market unsold in March of 2023 and also get historical context because 
Although we're on the uptick in March by the tune of 110%, with 1,992 homes sitting on the market in March unsold, and we're up 137.2% for the year over the course of the last 12 months in terms of monthly average at 1,954. If you look at the bottom of the chart, although we're not in the extreme shortage where we were during the extreme seller's market, we're a far cry from where we were in 2019, where there were 4,000 homes sitting on the market unsold. We are less than half of that. But that trend is not your friend. And if mortgage interest rates don't downtick and the Fed doesn't do what I think they're going to, well, then guess what? We're off to the races in terms of the supply side. And month's supply of inventory helped me tell that story a little bit better than how I just did it. Because the truth is, although we're at 4.9 months of month's supply of inventory, which is the biggest buyer's market that we've seen over the last 12 months, up 206%. Year to date, we're at 4.7, which is up 261%. If you go back in history, you can see in 2019, there were damn near 10 months of supply. That is an extreme buyer's market. We're not there yet, but we're certainly trending in that direction. And if we look at new listings by initial listing price, you're going to notice a short supply, specifically in the three to almost $400,000 range, down 11%. 400 to 600, or just there under, 28.9% short supply. 600 to under a million, short supply, down 23%. And a million or more, short supply of new listings to the tune of almost 23%. There is a short supply of new listings. And that's because most sellers don't want to trade out of a 2, 3, 4% mortgage into a 7, 8, 9, 10, 20% mortgage. But again, I suspect we're going to see some relief here in the near term, unless we don't, in which case you're going to continue to see a short supply, at least as far as new listings are concerned. And that only tells half the story. But the inventory by current listing price tells us a very different story that you must know if you're thinking about buying or selling. And what you can see is there's been a massive uptick in inventory in most price points. 250 to under 300, uptick 33.3%. 300 to just under 400, uptick 45%. 400 to just under 600, uptick damn near 70%. 600 to under a million, uptick damn near 100%. But a million dollars to infinity, uptick 131%. 1,191 homes sitting on the market, unsold a million dollars or more. That is no bueno if you're thinking about capitalizing on your equity because you're uncertain about your financial future. And it's great news if you're thinking about buying because you're going to negotiate a much better deal. And don't worry, I haven't forgot. I'm going to tell you what I would do if I was thinking about buying or selling a home right now in today's market. Which takes us to the distressed sale market. And to be clear, distressed sales are a non-event in the state of Florida for now. And I want to put an asterisk or an exclamation point or whatever gets your attention when I say for now. Because in the future, when many of the things that I suspect are going to happen are realized, I suspect there will be a big uptick in distressed sales. But that will take years. We're talking about three to five. I could be wrong. It might be less, but it will certainly be more than a year. Nonetheless, foreclosures, 0% change. There were two last year. There are two this year. Short sales, non-event. There were zero. Not applicable up until it is applicable, which takes me to the pro tips that you can employ if you're thinking about buying or selling in any market. And the first step that I do with anyone before going to see any properties, if they're unfamiliar with the market, is get them familiarized with the area that they're thinking about buying in. And that means I want you to go and immerse yourself in the area that you're shopping in. I want you to spend some time driving around and getting a feel for the location that you think 
might be perfect. Because until you do that, you're basically flying blind. Now, if you've got the wherewithal and you think you know where you want, I'd encourage you to get an Airbnb and stay in the place that you want to live in for a couple of weeks if you can, or for a few days at minimum. Spend the weekend, see what it's like overnight, see what it's like on the weekend, experience it firsthand. Now, if you're shopping in my market and you're totally unfamiliar with what it's like to live in South Florida, then check out my playlists because I have built out tons of content doing immersive driving tours in almost every city and many of the subdivisions that exist in the markets that I serve. But assuming that you know exactly where you want to be hyper-locally, which is great, you must know where you're at financially. It is critical, and I know I shared it earlier in the conversation, it is critical to speak with a mortgage broker who can then advise you with full transparency to them about your financial situation so that they can then shop and find the best product for you. And to be clear, you don't have to marry them. You don't have to use them, but you are seeking information and you want to know what the terms are. And you want to ask them what the max seller credit you can receive is based on your deposit and mortgage product, because those terms can change the fundamentals of your loan dramatically. It can save you a shit ton of interest payments. And we always want you to get the best deal and the best rate. From there, when interviewing a real estate professional, ask them if they understand how to negotiate a seller credit to your benefit. Because if they can't answer that question, you're working with someone who doesn't know their ass from a hole in the ground, and you don't want that. But assuming that you've gotten that far and you've checked those boxes and you're ready to go and you know what you want, it's time to start shopping. And the first thing that I'm going to be looking at in terms of product, and let me be totally transparent, every realtor who's worth their salt is going to set you up on a search based on whatever criteria you've shared with them. You want to look and see how long the property has been sitting on the market. You want to see the history of the listings because many homes have been relisted multiple times. You want to see if there is financial distress that the seller is experiencing. And while you'll get some of that information by doing a little bit of research within the MLS or whatever portal that you're looking at, you're not going to know for certain until you lay eyes on the property and create rapport with the listing agent or the sellers. And sometimes the sellers are home, which is great because I want to pick their brain. I want to see what their pain point is. I want to solve for whatever that pain point might be. And most of the time they're not there, but I'm going to do the same thing with the seller's agent. I'm going to ask them questions. I'm going to become their friend. I'm going to lean in. I want to know as much information as I possibly can glean from meeting them so I can solve for whatever the problem is. And in some instances, there is no problem. But in many instances, especially as we move into the future, there are going to be pain points and we want to solve for them. And depending on what the market conditions are when you're shopping, you'll have a lot more leverage in order to negotiate. But to be clear, in my market, which has changed radically over the last few months and certainly over the last year, there is still extreme demand in certain hyper-local markets. And in others, there's not. It really depends on where you want to be and the product that we're talking about. And so far this year, we've negotiated whopping discounts for our buyers. And so far this year, by pricing the homes the right way, creating a competitive market within the market, we've created bidding wars on almost every listing that we've taken and got them significantly more than where we listed at. We found the one buyer on planet Earth willing to pay more than anybody else. And if you're thinking about selling, when you interview whoever it is that you're considering hiring, ask them, how do you create a market within a market to find the one buyer on planet Earth willing to pay more than anybody else? And if they can't answer that question to your satisfaction, run away. 
and call me immediately because I'll connect you with someone who absolutely knows how to do that if you're outside of my market. If you're in my market, then call me directly and we will get it done. Which brings me back to the original title of this video, which is the next housing market crash being worse than 2008. And in some markets, it definitively will be. And in other markets, although there may be a correction, it won't be anywhere close. But the leading indicators, the new cycle that's happening now, that doesn't get priced in for months or years, is no bueno. The setup is in. The writing is on the wall. And I suspect when the everything bubble bursts, it's going to be much worse than 2008. But Chris, how can you say that and expect me to buy a home today? Well, depending which market you're in, the dynamics change differently. And my market happens to be a unique market in terms of there's no more land to develop. We are bordered by the Everglades to the west and the ocean to the east. And there is no more land to develop which is why you see builders negotiating aggressively to buy preserve land, to buy out old golf courses, to buy out anything they can that they can develop because the demand to live here is so strong. And until that changes, I suspect it's going to be single digit appreciation in most markets within Florida. Now, I hope you found this content valuable. And if you did, please subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, share it with a friend, be on the lookout because I fully intend to cover every metro that exists within the state of Florida. If you're thinking about buying or selling ever, please reach out because we would love to help and check out my next video because I suspect you will love it a lot. And until next time, peace.